Hi, I'm Chad. And behind me, we have my 2012 Triumph Daytona 675R race bike. Now, as you've noticed, it is naked up in the front right now. There are no fairings on it. And that is because we are doing a little bit of service before the next TRA race weekend. So this is gonna be a bit of an impromptu vlog spanning a few days as I fix a leak on my cam chain tensioner, change my oil and filter, and flush and refill the cooling system. One of the joys of owning a race bike that you may or may not be aware of is the high frequency of maintenance that needs to take place to make sure that the bike is running reliably and smoothly on track. I, for example, change my oil every 300 miles or three days or so. I check my brakes before every track day, and I also just do a general once over on the bike to make sure that everything is looking good. Flush the cooling system once a year. I use Redline Supercool and yeah, just kind of go as needed, but parts wear out very quickly as well. Brake pads last maybe a thousand miles. Uh, rotors need to be scrubbed and possibly re replaced if they're not within the uh, spec for how thick they're supposed to be. I haven't gotten there yet with these rotors, but I'm sure I will sooner than later. So again, in today's video, we're gonna be checking out the cam chain tensioner, that's where I'm starting today. And let me show you what that looks like real quick. So this here, this whole piece is the cam chain tensioner. We're on the right hand side of my Daytona 675R. Of course, I've removed all the fairings, so this is pretty easily accessible. Uh, the track fairings are pretty nice. Actually, I'm gonna get a little distracted real quick. There's the belly pan flipped upside down over there. And over there, we have the race front end and windscreen. So lucky for me, it takes only about 10 minutes, maybe 15 to get all of the fairings off of the front half of the bike. Pretty easy to get to anything that you would need to service. Again, we are going to be fixing a leak coming from the cam chain tensioner. I believe we're leaking somewhere on the seal behind uh, this mounting bolt right here. I cleaned it up a little bit already just to see if it would stop leaking. Um, and obviously because I haven't run the engine, it hasn't leaked anymore, but just to be extra safe, we're gonna go ahead and remove the cam chain tensioner, put some RTV behind it, and put it all back together and hope it doesn't leak. To do this, we're gonna have to remove my nice GB Racing timing cover slider, as well as the timing cover itself. Stick a socket in between the cam chain guide and the engine block to keep tension on the chain. So when we take this guy out, the tension doesn't come loose and we don't skip any teeth or have any undesirable consequences of performing this job. So my GoPro is dead. I'm not going to be able to do a time lapse for you guys today. So the next time I check in with you, I'm just going to have this off so we can see inside what the cam chain tensioner looks like. And we'll have this out as well and be cleaning it up and putting new RTV on it before we torque it back down. So for me, that's going to be in about 30 minutes. For you, it's going to be in three, two, one, we have the timing cover removed. So this is the drive sprocket for the cam chain. This runs up into the cylinder head area underneath this cam cover are two gears that are on the camshafts. This being the intake camshaft on this side and this being the exhaust camshaft. So this chain runs all the way up through the case over both of these two sprockets or cam gears on the camshafts and then back on down here and that is what keeps your engine in time and makes sure that your valves are not hitting your pistons. My issue here was that this cam chain tensioner, this guy, my manual cam chain tensioner, was leaking just a little tiny bit of oil. So there's this little metal gasket that actually I reused from uh, the stock cam chain tensioner plus a little bit of RTV and it was just uh, leaking a little bit around the lower bolt that was on the tensioner itself. So the bolt hole by my thumb, that area was just getting a little bit of seepage. So this is where it goes. I'm gonna go ahead and put some RTV on that and then put the gasket back over it and then torque the cam chain tensioner back down and hopefully we'll be A-OK -okay and not leaking any more oil but I will check back with you guys when everything is put back together and the RTP is carrying. So like that, we're gonna... All right, so this stage we're about done for tonight. Put a new gasket on underneath the timing cover. So hopefully that seals up nicely. It wasn't leaking before and hopefully it won't be now. 
put a thin coat of RTV on the engine case part of this and then put the gasket back on top of that. So RTV gasket cam chain tensioner. According to the RTV, you're supposed to get the bolts about hand tight just until a little bit of RTV gets squeezed out of the uh, mating surfaces here. So I wiped that off, I'm waiting an hour for it to cure per the instructions. After that, we'll torque these two bolts down and uh, let it sit overnight and then uh, move on to changing the oil tomorrow or Wednesday. And welcome back. Today we are draining, flushing, and refilling the cooling system on my bike. So there's some safety wire we're gonna need to cut off first. After that, we'll be able to take the radiator cap off, remove the drain bolt on the water pump, and also disconnect one of the cooling hoses to aid in removing the old dirty coolant. I think I'm also gonna pull the tank off so that I can get the coolant overflow tank out, give that a clean as well. But anyways, we've got work to do, so let's get started. So fuel tank is off, we've got the coolant overflow tank out. I put some distilled water in and I shook it up. There's a little bit of debris in there. Um, I know that the guy that I bought this bike from ran an engine ice in it. I don't know if he flushed the cooling system with distilled water or tap water, but there is a little bit of debris in there. That could also just be left over from the crash that I had bike did fall on the left side and kicked up some dirt. So some of that made it into the overflow tank somehow. I mean, it's possible. I, I did have it happen with my old Daytona 675 once. So maybe that's the case, but um, yeah, I just want to make sure it's all good and cleaned out before we fill it back up with some coolant. And also just to be clear, I have flushed the cooling system on this bike before, um, twice actually. Once when I first got it back in 2019, and then again last year uh, before some of the summer season so that I was effectively cooled in the hot weather but we're gonna go ahead and get back to work here and i'll check in with you guys once we've drained the radiator got the overflow tank back on and it is much cleaner than it was before so now we're gonna proceed to cut the safety wire on the water pump drain plug this little bolt right here with safety wire on it we're also going to cut the safety wire up here on the top of the radiator cap the fill cap so that we can drain the system and fill it with some distilled water. I'll run the bike for a little bit, just let it circulate, clear everything out, let it cool off, drain it, and then uh, fill it up with some super cool by Redline. Let's go!
All right, so the cooling system has been drained. There it is, all good coolant. And we went ahead and plugged everything back up, drained this hose too, just for good measure, and then reattached the water pump drain bolt. So it's full of distilled water right now. We're gonna fire the bike up, let it run, get the operating temperature so the thermostat can open, wait until the fans come on, and then we're gonna shut the bike down and let it cool off. So we can drain one more time before we pull it back up with super cool. This is also gonna be a good time to check and make sure that the cam chain tensioner is sealing and not leaking around its uh, mating surface to the block now. So we're gonna keep an eye on that as well as the timing cover gasket that we replaced the other day. So with that, here's a cold startup on a 2012 Triumph Daytona 675R with a Triumph off-road slip-on exhaust. Freaking clutch safety switch. So we ran the bike, it is up to operating temperature, the thermostat opened, I verified that because this hose here is getting hot. Back here we have uh, behind the frame, there is actually the uh, thermostat housing in the thermostat. So when the bike reaches 158 degrees coolant temperature, that opens and allows coolant to circulate into the radiator and makes this an open system. Otherwise, otherwise it stays closed. If the uh, water temperature is below 158 degrees, that allows the coolant that's in the block to just heat up faster and allows the engine to warm up and be more efficient in less time. So that's basically that. At this point, we just need to let the bike cool off and then we'll drain it and then uh, fill it up again with uh, super cool, which I have more of back there. Now back for round two. After getting some actual work done, we're gonna drain the coolant and splash dirty engine water all over the place once again. Let's do this and then we'll start the bike up, fill it up with coolant and call it a day. So the bike is off. It reached peak operating temperature. And as you can see here, once the gauge comes on, yep, there it is, six bars. Six is normal, five to six. I've seen seven, actually I've only seen seven once and that was uh, the last time I was at Button Willow when it was over 100 degrees. It only got up that hot when I came in the pits and there wasn't a lot of air moving through it, but uh, this should help with that. 
and just cooling in general. At this point, I think we're done for tonight. Um, again, the cooling fan cycled on and off, I think three times, and I revved the engine up a bunch too, so that should have circulated everything through the cooling system well enough to get most of the bubbles out. If there are any little bubbles left, they'll just kind of work themselves out naturally. But uh, the overflow tank, I actually overfilled it a little bit, and then um, I noticed the level dropped, so that's good. That means we got some air out of the system that was still trapped in there. As the bike cools off, it will draw coolant in from the overflow tank to replace the air that is going out since the system is under pressure and we should be good to go. I'll check the overflow tank again after the bike's cooled off. That's it for now. What is up guys? We're back at it again in the garage wrapping up the bike maintenance ahead of the CRA race weekend today. We're going to be changing my Daytona's oil and filter. She's just about ready to go. Just gonna need to throw the oil pan underneath her, fire her up, let her get some temperature in her, and then we will drain the oil and pull the filter off, which I actually first need to remove this uh, hose clamp here because you have to be able to safety wire your oil filter, but they'll only allow you to run a stock filter, an OEM oil filter, uh, because the aftermarket Canon ones tend to fail from time to time. But we don't want that. They don't want that either. We're gonna put a new Triumph oil filter on here and reattach this clamp, safety wire it to itself like I did here, and then safety wire it to the engine. So let's get started. Ah. The joys of race bike. is up to about operating temperature. We're gonna go ahead and loosen up our drain plug and get that old oil on out of there. It's always great fun because the drain plug is always hot and so is the oil. And we don't like burning ourselves. But I'd say that went pretty smoothly. fill the oil filter with some oil because this will give the bike oil pressure a little bit quicker when we gotta fire it up for the first time after filling, refilling it with oil. So pour in the center there. Don't pour into the little holes around because oops because that's the exit but anyways see the oil is receding. So you want to go until it's about halfway full two-thirds maybe and just Give it a little bit of time so that the filter medium can actually soak up the oil.
red bike up, let her get up to operating temperature, and then give her a little oil check. Just race bike things, no kickstand. <laughs> temperature. Now I've let her sit for about five minutes, let the fan cycle on once or I think two, three times. So everything should be nice and hot. I ran it through the years a couple times on the stand. So hopefully that helps circulate some oil around even though there wasn't a lot of load on the engine. That's more than nothing. So we're gonna go ahead and check and just make sure our oil level is where it should be at. And our level's good. So we're all set here.
just the quick little walk around tour. One seventy seven, that's me, baby. Chain is cleaned and lubed, and the bike is nice and clean. So we are ready to go. And voila, just like that, she is all done and ready to race. So we completed a cooling system flush and fill with Redline Super Cool, which is 50 50 water, wetter, and distilled water. Provides excellent cooling at the racetrack, especially in the extreme heat we'll probably be seeing at Button Willow. In addition to that, I changed the oil with Motul Full Synthetic 300V Racing Line. Good stuff. I've been running my bikes for years and nothing has blown up on me yet. We also put in a new Triumph OEM oil filter. OEM oil filters are required per CRA's guidelines and rules. Uh, but outside of that, we re safety wired the bike. I also off camera cleaned and re greased the rear axle, checked my brakes as well, made sure that they're in good working order and there's plenty of life left in the pads. So we're all good to go here. Body works all back on. The last thing I'm going to need to do is safety wire the oil dipstick and the oil fill cap, which I will do on Friday at the end of the day after I check them and make sure everything is topped off. Since the bike hasn't really been run hard or gotten up to operating temperature or gotten its normal oil pressure, I suspect I will need to top off the oil just a little bit, but it should be good to go for at least the first couple sessions of the day. With that, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this one up. Thanks for watching. I hope this video gave you a bit of insight into what it is like to own a dedicated racing and track motorcycle and the kind of maintenance that goes into it and the frequency. So if you wanna catch me running this bike in a club racing series, definitely recommend you subscribe. I'll be covering my entire race weekend experience, the track day, qualifying and race day should be pretty exciting and something I would not recommend missing. If you do subscribe, turn those notifications on so you get notified when I post. If you did enjoy this video, go ahead and give me a gentle little click of the like button. That'll also help me let me know that you're rooting for me in my race weekend and uh, rooting for me to finish in the top 10 and not run off the track like I did the last time. It should be a very exciting weekend as I'll be running Button Willows Configuration 26 for the first time, also going counterclockwise. So it's basically like I'm gonna be learning a new track, which is gonna be fun and exciting, especially coming out of Star Mazda Corner, this kind of almost like a hairpin out onto a long back straight, which runs into the fastest turn on the track, Riverside, which should see entry speeds around 100 miles an hour. So it's gonna be exciting. Gonna be getting this thing probably into fifth, maybe even sixth gear on that straightaway. Sure to be wild. But I'm excited for the race weekend. Should be a great time. Until then, later.